Leia here from LeiaForSci.com, and in this video, we'll talk about the degree of unsaturation, also known as the index of hydrogen deficiency. I was lucky in undergrad because I learned the formula CnH2n plus 2. But some of my students were not so lucky. They learned that the degree of unsaturation is equal to 2C plus 2 plus N minus X minus H, all of that divided by 2. If you're looking at this and going, oh my god, what's going on? Don't worry. I want to show you what this formula means and how you can logically come up with a deficiency without having to memorize anything this crazy. We'll start with the simple formula of CnH2n plus 2, which is this portion here, 2 times C plus 2. Understand what it means and then show you how to add on each component to the formula. First, we have to talk about saturated versus unsaturated. When I think of the word saturated, for example, a saturated solution or a rag saturated with a liquid, I think of full. It's holding the most that it can of a certain thing. If we're referring to a hydrocarbon, that means it is saturated with hydrogens and we have the maximum number of hydrogen atoms. If it is unsaturated, that means it's not full. You can think of that as missing hydrogen atoms. So what does that mean? If I have a bunch of carbon atoms and they're all single bound to each other, the maximum number of hydrogen atoms that I can place on this molecule will be giving each carbon a total of four bonds. And if that bond is not to another carbon, it's going to be to a hydrogen atom. This right here is the maximum number of hydrogen atoms I can place on this four carbon chain. And that makes this molecule saturated. But if I take away some of those hydrogen atoms and put a pi bond between the carbon atoms, the carbons now are unsaturated because they can potentially hold more hydrogen atoms, but they don't. So let's start with the most basic formula of CnH2n plus 2 and see where this comes from logically. Because you probably saw this in your textbook and memorized it, but if you understand what it means, you'll be able to put the pieces together. If I have n number of carbon atoms, I can draw them out in a chain. We'll use four for this example. Then for every carbon atom, I have to have at least two hydrogen atoms. If every carbon has two hydrogens at its maximum saturation, that's where I get the 2n. But because the terminal carbons are not bound to another carbon atom, I have to add in plus 2 one hydrogen to the right and one hydrogen to the left. This is where I get the formula 2n plus 2 for a saturated hydrocarbon. But now, if I want to make it unsaturated, for example, I want to add a pi bond to this molecule, the two carbons that are pi bound to each other have five bonds total, which violates their octet. So to make that pi bond possible, I have to remove two hydrogen atoms, bringing their total bond count back down to four. In other words, the cost of a pi bond is two hydrogen atoms. I have to remove two hydrogen atoms to allow the carbon the ability to make that bond. Let's say I want to add a triple bond or a second pi bond between these two carbon atoms. Once again, they have five bonds each. And once again, the cost is really two more hydrogen atoms to free up carbon to bind. If you look at it, we have two pi bonds that each cost us two hydrogen atoms. Now, if you had memorized the formula for an alkene, you'll remember that it was CnH2n, but really it's the formula of 2n plus 2, and then minus 2 for the pi bond, plus 2 minus 2 cancels, that's how you get the CnH2n. So don't memorize it, recognize it. Now, if you remember the formula, for the alkyne, it was CnH2n minus 2. How do we get minus 2? We really start with 2n plus 2, and then minus 2 for the first pi bond, minus 2 for the second one, plus 2 minus 2 cancels, which leaves us with a net of 2n minus 2. That's because every pi bond costs us two hydrogen atoms. 
Remember these carbon atoms are sp3 and that means they are able to rotate about their single bond. So here we have a six carbon chain saturated. Notice that every carbon has the two green hydrogens plus the two purple ones at the terminal carbons. But I've rotated so that it almost looks like it's about to form a ring. If I want to turn this hexane into a cyclohexane, the terminal carbons each have five bonds which violates their octet. So what I have to do is remove two hydrogen atoms, bringing it back down to four. In other words, the cost of a ring is also two hydrogen atoms. And the key takeaway here is that every pi bond costs two hydrogen atoms and every ring costs two hydrogen atoms. So if you're given a formula, how can you apply this logic? Let's see. If I give you the formula C6H12, and you want to figure out how many pi bonds or rings are present, start with the formula CnH2n plus 2 to find out what a saturated hydrocarbon would have and then compare it to what you have. So if we have CnH2n plus 2 and we compare it to this formula, the carbon number is 6, n is 6, and that means for hydrogen we would expect to have 2n or 2 times 6 plus 2. 2 times 6 is 12 plus 2 is 14. The next thing we want to do is compare what we should have to what we have. We should have 14. We only have 12. The difference between them is 2, but that doesn't mean I have 2 pi bonds or 2 rings, because remember the cost of each pi bond or ring is 2. Since the cost is 2, we're going to divide it by 2, and that means our answer is 1. That one is our degree of unsaturation, which means one pi bond or one ring. You'll also hear it called the index of hydrogen deficiency. The index is one for each pi bond or ring. And you'll also hear it called double bond equivalence or DBE. Again, a bond is a double bond or a ring is the equivalent of a double bond in terms of the deficiency. Let's see how it relates to the crazy formula. If we have two times the number of carbon atoms, that was 2n, plus 2. We don't have nitrogen or halogen, so we ignore that for now. Then we subtract the number of hydrogen atoms. So remember, we calculated 14 from the 2 times carbon plus 2, or 2n plus 2. We subtracted 12, and that gave us 2. We divided the whole thing by 2, and that's how we got 1 for the degree of unsaturation. The next thing to consider is what if you have an oxygen atom in your molecule, especially because this formula does not appear to account for oxygen. And the reason for that is because oxygen does not change your formula. Let's see by looking back at our initial saturated molecule. If I take this bond to hydrogen and I just exaggerate it a little, nothing changed. Say I want to put an oxygen into the molecule in the form of an alcohol. I'll put the oxygen right there. So that means I have carbon bound to oxygen, oxygen bound to hydrogen. Notice that the number of hydrogen atoms did not change when I added in that oxygen, and so it didn't change my formula. But now let's say instead of an alcohol, I want to look at an ether. So I'll take an oxygen atom and place it in between two carbon atoms. Once again, the formula didn't change. The common argument here is, okay, that's for single bound, but what if I have a carbonyl? If I have a carbon double bound to an oxygen, doesn't that change the formula? And the answer is still no. Let's take a look. For this molecule right here, in order to have a carbon double bound to oxygen, I need to free up two spots on the carbon atom, because remember, every pi bond costs two hydrogen atoms, and that is how I get my carbonyl or carbon double bound to an oxygen. The argument here is, I just removed two hydrogen atoms in order to place that oxygen there. But watch this. The number of hydrogens changed not because of the oxygen atom, but because of the fact that there is a pi bond. I will have the same deficiency of two hydrogens if I place a pi bond between two carbon atoms and then put an oxygen in between carbon and hydrogen. Notice that these two molecules are constitutional isomers of each other because they have the same exact molecular formula. The only difference is where the atoms are placed. So if I have a pi bond on the molecule, I lose two hydrogens regardless of if that pi bond is carbon to oxygen or carbon to carbon. 
On the periodic table, the sulfur atom sits directly below oxygen. That means sulfur has the same bonding pattern, and therefore if sulfur shows up in your formula, treat it as an oxygen and ignore it because it's not going to change your number of hydrogen atoms. So we've looked at the 2C plus 2 and the divided by 2. We've discussed why oxygen and sulfur aren't in the formula. Now let's take a look at nitrogen. For every nitrogen atom on your molecule, you have plus one. So if it's two nitrogen, you do plus two. And that's because nitrogen does change the number of hydrogen atoms. How? Let's take a look. Once again, we're looking at our fully saturated carbon chain. And this time I want to add nitrogen into the formula. So we'll attach the nitrogen in between the carbon and hydrogen atom. But as you know, nitrogen has five valence electrons. That means we have one, two, three and four as a lone pair, the fifth one will require another bond. And that bond is going to add a hydrogen to your formula. In other words, every time you add in a nitrogen atom, that nitrogen needs to have that fifth bond, needs to have one more hydrogen. And so for every nitrogen added into your molecule, you have to add in at least one hydrogen atom. And if you ask, but what if nitrogen is not attached to any hydrogen atoms, the formula, the number of bonds in that molecule isn't going to change. So let's take a look. As you can see, here I have the same four carbon atoms, but nitrogen as a tertiary amine is now attached to three carbon atoms. In the starting molecule, we had eight green hydrogens, two black ones, and one red. Let's prove that we have those same hydrogens on this. Look at that. Even though the nitrogen atom is not attached to any hydrogens, the fact that nitrogen introduces that extra bond into the molecule, we still require that extra hydrogen atom. On the periodic table, phosphorus sits directly under nitrogen, and that means if a phosphorus shows up in your molecule, treat it the same way and add one hydrogen every time it shows up. And last but not least, we want to look at halogens in the formula, where X represents fluorine, chlorine, bromine, or iodine. What you see here is minus X, or minus 1 for every halogen, directly followed by minus H. So if you imagine that the halogen and H are the same thing, it's really minus the total number of hydrogens, or halogen, which adds the same way as hydrogen. So let's take a look and see why we treat it that way. Looking at the saturated molecule, if I want to add a chlorine atom, what I have to do is free up a space on carbon so that I can bind my chlorine. Halogens have seven valence electrons, that means three lone pairs and only one bond. So to add a halogen, I have to remove a hydrogen, and just like hydrogen can't do any more bonds other than the first one to carbon, halogens don't either. So even though halogens are not hydrogens, the way they add onto the molecule and the way they impact your formula is exactly the same. So if I look at this molecule, I can say, well, I have nine hydrogen atoms and one halogen, or I can say the halogen, which is like a hydrogen atom, gives me a total of nine plus one or 10 hydrogens for a fully saturated molecule. Same thing for another halogen. Let's say I want to add fluorine. All I do is remove a hydrogen. So when you see a formula and you're trying to find the degree of unsaturation, instead of adding the halogen separately, just count them as if they're hydrogen atoms and that will simplify your calculation. So let's take a look at the formula for this. I have C4H8FCl. To find the index of hydrogen deficiency or the degree of unsaturation, we want to use CnH2n plus 2. In this case, C is 4, which means that N is 4, and H is going to be 2N, or 2 times 4, plus 2. 2 times 4 is 8, plus 2 is 10. We expect to have a total of 10 hydrogen atoms, but I only have 8, plus a fluorine, plus a chlorine. They're both halogens, so I'm going to say it's as if I have a hydrogen here and a hydrogen here. So I'll count my hydrogens as 8, plus 1, plus 1, which gives me 10. 10 is 10, and I have no unsaturation. That means zero pi bonds and zero rings on this molecule. So let's revisit this crazy formula one more time just to make sure you know what to do, and more specifically, so that you know not to use this crazy formula. When you see a formula for a molecule, here's what you want to do. Forget this craziness and start with CnH2n plus 2. Identify any other atoms in the formula. If it's an oxygen or a sulfur, 
ignore it. If you see a halogen, just pretend it's a hydrogen and add it onto the hydrogen count like we did in the last example. And if you see a nitrogen, recognize that nitrogen requires one extra hydrogen each. So that means when you calculate your total number of hydrogen atoms, just subtract one per nitrogen. And that final hydrogen number is the one you're going to compare to the CnH2n plus 2 number. Divide that by 2, and that answers your degree of hydrogen deficiency from a perspective of logic rather than, honestly, confusing craziness. Now this is ideal if you're working on constitutional isomers or if you're trying to find the molecular structure from spectroscopy. I have tutorial videos on both of these topics, which you can find on my website, layerforsci.com slash organic chemistry. Are you struggling with organic chemistry? Are you looking for resources and information to guide you through the course and help you succeed? If so, then I have a deal for you. A free copy of my ebook, 10 Secrets to Acing Organic Chemistry. Use the link below or visit orgosecrets.com to grab your free copy. After downloading your free copy of my ebook, you'll begin receiving my exclusive email updates with cheat sheets, reaction guides, study tips, and so much more. You'll also be the first to know when I have a new video or live review coming up. If you enjoyed this video, please click the thumbs up and share it with your organic chemistry friends and classmates. I will be uploading many videos over the course of the semester, so if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, do so right now to be sure that you don't miss out.